Suppose that you had the Johnson Johnson COVID vaccine and wondering how well your immune system stands against the Delta variant, and wondering the effect of mixing different vaccines from a different manufacturer. If that's the case, you need to watch this video. Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's classroom. Now my wife and another 10 plus million people in the US who had received the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine are probably wondering what does the Delta variant mean to them. What complicated the matter is that the FDA just authorized a booster dose from Pfizer or Moderna for some immunocompromised patient. Hmm, you wonder, what if those patients or who had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine at the beginning, now would they be mixing in a different brand as a different booster dose? Hmm. So today let's look into this topic about what we know so far and what people could expect from mixing in a different vaccine from a different manufacturer. Now without further ado, let's head to the screen. Let's first look at what we know so far about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine effectiveness against the Delta variant. According to the Johnson & Johnson press release on July 1st, the company stated they observed 8 samples from their Phase 3 ensemble trial that had enough neutralizing antibody activity against the Delta variant. It was even better than against the Beta variant. However, a preprint study from the NYU showed the antibodies from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine had lower neutralization ability against the Delta, Delta Plus, and Lambda variants. Note that both reports have a very small sample size and did not look at T-cell response. A different study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine that looked at both the antibody and the T-cell immune responses from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, although the sample size was still very small, only 20 participants. Now, In this study, the authors reported that antibody levels only decreased by 1.8-fold in 8 months, and in terms of the T-cell response, helper T cell decreased by about two and a half fold, but cytotoxic T cell levels increases in eight months, indicating a progressively stronger T cell immune response. Very interestingly, even though the level of antibody had decreased, the neutralization level was higher at eight months than in one month after vaccination. They also showed that the antibodies are more effective in neutralizing the Delta variant than the Beta variant. This finding agrees with the Johnson & Johnson press release statement. So let's have a midway conclusion based on these three reports. The Johnson & Johnson vaccines appear to retain both antibody and T-cell responses at 8 months after vaccination. It also seemed to work better against the Delta variant than the Beta variant. But all three reports had a very small sample size. What complicated the matters a little bit is that the FDA has just announced authorizing a booster dose from Pfizer or Moderna for some immunocompromised patients and maybe perhaps later for other vulnerable populations. So the question is, if you had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, could you get a booster dose from another manufacturer? Let's break this down into several top points, and first, let's look at our experience of mixing vaccines. Mixing vaccines with different technologies is not a new thing. For example, the European Medicines Agency approved combining vaccines for Ebola prevention. According to the EMA document, people would first receive a dose of vaccine based on the same human adenoviral 26 vector technology made by Johnson & Johnson and then receive an engineered attenuated pox virus vaccine, and high-risk people would get a booster dose of the same adenoviral vector vaccine again four months later. This strategy has proven to be safe and effective. 
So what do we know so far about mixing COVID vaccines? We will look at three different effectiveness studies, specifically the antibody and T-cell responses. Currently, almost all available published papers have looked at the effect of mixing the AZ or AstraZeneca vaccine with mRNA vaccines. Now, it is important to note that the AZ vaccine uses a chimpanzee adenoviral vector, and the Johnson and Johnson vaccine used a human adenoviral vector. Although they are quite different, but the technology still shares some similarity. So. The even though it is not a direct applicable result in the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the result could give us a glimpse. First, let's look at an article published on July 14 in Nature Medicine. In this article, the author compared the immune system response against the SARS-CoV-2 virus by mixing the AZ vaccine with the Pfizer vaccine or two doses of the same vaccine. This is a relatively small study with only 88 participants. Now everyone received the AZ vaccine as their first dose, then 32 received the AZ second dose, and 55 received the Pfizer second dose. They first look at the antibody level production. These two graphs clearly showed the mixing AZ and Pfizer vaccine produced significantly higher IgG and IgA antibodies. But on the other hand, there are no statistically significant differences in the amount of memory B cell production. They also compared the antibody levels of different vaccine combinations, and after two to four weeks of receiving two doses, the AZ Pfizer combination appears to have the highest amount of IgG antibody production. Next, let's look at how the antibodies work on neutralizing the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This graph on the left shows two doses of the AZ vaccine, or mixing the two are very effective against the original strain of the virus. But when we look at the effect on the different variants, only two doses of the AZ vaccine were not very effective in neutralizing the beta, gamma variant. Now, on the other hand, mixing AZ with Pfizer vaccines generated antibodies that effectively neutralize all three variants. The results suggest that mixing vaccines could possibly generate antibodies that are helpful to fight the Delta or even the Lambda variant. Certainly, this will require more studies to confirm. Now, the next question is, how about T-cells and other components of the immune system defense? Here on the left-hand side, we see that mixing the AZ and Pfizer vaccines can significantly increase both helper and cytotoxic T-cells response to spike protein. They also increase the production of cytokines that modulate other components of the immune system. Now let's have a midway conclusion and look at the limitation of that study. Now based on this small study, mixing the AZ and Pfizer vaccine appears to stimulate higher antibodies and cellular responses. The most significant limitation of this study is that the participants were relatively young and healthy with an average age of 38 years old. In addition, they did not collect safety data after mixing the vaccine. Now, we also don't have direct evidence of how the combination affects the Delta variant. I understand I've been throwing in a lot of specific immunology terms, and don't worry, I've produced quite a few one-minute short and brief videos that explain the basics of immunology and immune system, and please feel free to check those out after watching this video. The links are in the description box down below. Now I know you have the next question, what about mixing in the Moderna vaccine? This correspondence, published on July 14 in the New England Journal of Medicine, specifically looked at this question. The data was collected from 88 Swedish healthcare workers 
37 received a two doses of the AstraZeneca or AZ vaccine, and 51 of them mixed the AZ with the Moderna vaccine. And very quickly, to summarize the result, it showed that mixing AZ and Moderna vaccine had 20 times higher antibody neutralization ability and effective against the beta variant. But the study did not look at other variants and did not assess the T-cell responses. And the final study on this topic published in Nature Medicine on July 26 looked at the AZ vaccine mixed with either the Moderna or the Pfizer vaccine and compared it to not combining vaccines. Now to not bore you all, I'm skipping all the detailed graphs. I have all the links to the study in the description box down below and you can check it out for those of you that are data savvy. And here I'm summarizing the result. In terms of antibody levels, mixing AZ and mRNA vaccines and two doses of mRNA vaccines were quite similar but both were higher than two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines. In terms of helper T cells, the helper T cell response showed a similar pattern, but interestingly, mixing two types of vaccines had a higher level of cytotoxic T cells response, and there's no data on variants in this study. And let's have a quick overall summary of three studies. And here I have a table putting all the results on one page I, for the pressure of viewing. It is quite evident that mixing AZ with mRNA vaccines has produced a better antibody and cellular responses, but it looks quite similar to two doses of mRNA vaccine. And again, we must not forget about the limitations of these three studies. These three studies involved a very small number of people, and we don't know the effects in older population and very young people. And we also don't know how T cells respond to the variants. And lastly, there is limited data on side effects. And now let's look at what we know about the frequency of common side effects of mixing vaccines. In the study that we just went through that was published in Nature Medicine on July 26, they also look at the immediate side effects. The term reactogenicity means side effect in this context. Overall, after mixing in the AstraZeneca vaccine with mRNA vaccines, the immediate side effects are quite similar to two doses of mRNA vaccines, but the numbers are significantly higher than two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And here is another summary table of the most significant side effects. Basically, people who received the mixed vaccines reported more pain, swelling, headache, chills, and fatigue. And more of them also reported using drugs to treat post-vaccination fever. And one last study we are going to look at today is a study back in May that was published in the Lancet Journal. Also specifically look at the side effect profiles of combining different COVID vaccines. The result of this study is also very similar to the study that we just went through. And mixing vaccines can lead to more injection pain, chills, fatigue, muscle ache, headache, joint pain, and feeling tired. Let's have an overall conclusion on the side effects. Mixing AZ and mRNA vaccines appear to have more common side effects than typical vaccine regimen. This includes injection pain, fever, feeling tired, muscle soreness, and fever. Now, it is reasonable to believe that similar side effects profiles will also happen with mixing the Johnson & Johnson and mRNA vaccines. Of course, this will require studies to confirm. And now, what can we expect in the future here in the U.S.? Currently, the NIH is running a Phase 1-2 clinical study in adult volunteers to see the safety and effectiveness of mixing vaccines that are currently available in the U.S. Now, the trial is still in its recruiting period, and we could see some preliminary results in the next few months. The most important questions to address is the safety profile. Having more common side effects such as fever is still not desirable. Also, the public should be informed if mixing vaccines would increase the risk of rare but serious side effects such as blood clot, Guillain-Barre syndrome, myocarditis, 
and specifically in certain age groups and gender. And there are actually many types of different antibodies. And if you would like to learn more about antibodies and other immunology topic, please check out this one minute short and brief video and other videos in this series. Oh, that's a lot of information in one video. Well, I hope that was a little bit helpful. Now, if you had received the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine, I would like you to leave me a comment and tell me what is your take on this topic. And if you like to follow more on the COVID-19 update and other health science related topic, please consider subscribing to the channel. This channel needs your help to reach more people. That is all for this week and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to check out my short and brief series about immunology for everyone. Now, in the meantime, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.